to the private beta first on PlayStation 4 for the players. On. Right, there you go. Is my audio on? Your audio is on. Are you sure? Because it doesn't look like it is. It is. Look. That's my one. Yeah. Right. That's both of us. Oh! Yes. We're recording on the same one? Yes, we're recording on the same one. Wow, well, there you are. Okay. Alright, uh, I guess we've already oh. started accidentally then. The same one. Yeah. So, hello everyone, and welcome to a live stream of an unboxing of the Dark Souls board game. And a first playthrough of the Dark Souls board game for both myself and Mr. Matthew Geary, who is here with me. Say hello, Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, to be a little bit honest, I've already 
unboxed this myself, but Matt has not seen anything of this. Nope. So the purpose of this is to show it off, get some of Matt's reactions to some very detailed miniatures, and then have a crack through and see if we can actually manage to survive through the game. Sweet. It's a very, very tough game from everything that we've heard. Okay, so we need a uh, entire table view. Right, so here we have the lovely yeah, creation itself, the kickstarted yeah. version of the Dark Souls board game. This right, so is quite a hefty lovely. box, as you can see. It's not a small, and it's not heavy, not too light either. It's a pretty hefty box, unfortunately, which means I had to put it in the boot to get it over here because I knew just one errant turn. <laughs> and it, I was just getting smacked in the face <laughs> by 20 kilograms of cardboard. Right. So, let's show you this now. So, open this very carefully. It says 90 minutes to two hours on the top. One of the things that I have seen from all the reviews is that if you can manage to do it in the 90 minutes to two hours, as it says right there, 90 minutes to two hours, then you are doing incredibly well. <laughs> Brilliant. Very difficult. But you can see, really nice um, artwork from Dark Souls 3. Uh, I believe that the reason it's all Dark Souls 3 imagery is because this was kind of sold around the same time as Dark Souls 3 came out. So from software, who own the license and um, it would be Bandai Namco, I believe. Yep. Um, they wanted it to be a Dark Souls 3 heavy inspired game. And so that's what it's turned out to be as we get inside. So very first impression there. You might not be able to see it perfectly, but again, we'll move this up towards the camera. You died. <laughs> <laughs> very first thing that you see i guess this is just kind of setting the scene for you you should expect that you are going to die quite a bit in fact there's a single player rules for the game and the single player gets i think six lives so you can die up to five times as a single player and still actually make it through with a victory so start off here with very nice very detailed set of rules very good print quality as well on the rules. Very detailed rules as we'll go into as we're actually playing through, but very high quality, some lovely artwork that goes between. Towards the end, there's some rules for doing a campaign playthrough of the game. There's some lovely artwork from Dark Souls 2. Make that a bit more obvious and beautiful. And some nice iconography on the back. There's a quick rule sheet there. So getting in, what you get provided is a lot of very nice thick tokens. So you can see the tokens for everything from treasure chests through to souls. Some very, very lovely tokens. Are, very are, nice. they, are they dark souls? No, these are normal souls. Uh. But I don't think we're going to get a dark soul in the board game, maybe. What is a Dark Souls? Do you know what? I uh, you're you're gonna hate me for this. Um, I I play Dark Souls um, as a, like a a demo once the first right. one. Yeah. And then I've never played any of them. Didn't get good. What? Well, yeah, I don't know what it was. I I obviously was into something else at the time. I thought, yeah, really? I'll get it. I've still got Dark Souls two in the cellophane. <laughs> That's it. That's painful. It I is. mean, if you're gonna start them, I'd actually recommend um, Bloodborne. Okay. Bloodborne is the easiest one to get into. So um, the games themselves are a little... like They're wonderful. I love them. It's the best series of games ever, in my opinion. But they are a little difficult to get into and that they're made to be a little obtuse. Bloodborne, I think, helps with some of that. And it, it it's a little... It's not easier, but it's a little lighter if right okay trying to and it teach it eases you in to the concept of the game yeah. a lot better than dark souls one does it's like just play the game fuck you like basically <laughs> basically how it works <laughs> but yep and so we get a good set of cards here now because this is the english edition of the kickstarter as you can see some lovely union jacks there on the cards what else could we really want apart from some union jacks Play that to one side because we will need those later. And now we get into the good stuff. Well, actually, no, we'll save that for a little bit just to get Matt's reaction. So, here are some character sheets. 
show that through to Matt as well. Got some very nice detailed character sheets, very good print quality, very good image quality for the character sheets as well. Quite again, nice thickness. Don't need the Dark Souls on the back like you've got there, but it's quite nice to have that. We've got starting off with four players, four characters, and then we have these map tiles. All of the map tiles are reversible. So you get two different versions of the map tiles. See here we've got the home tile, and even that is reversible, so you can have two different versions of the home tile. Ooh, Very pretty. nice. Very pretty indeed. Gorgeous tiles, absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the like the other half of the boss tile. And yes, start off with that down there because that's how we play that through. To be honest, when they came up with, when Steam Forge came up with it, what a good idea! Like really, you know, I don't. There's not many sort of games like this that are made into sort of board games, mm. and uh, obviously it showed because they got about a bazillion pounds. Yeah, they did end up on just shy of four million, didn't mm -hmm. they? So what are the circles? So the circles are all nodes. So um, the way that the game plays is as a player character and as the enemies, they can move from one node to another. And that's like one move, essentially. Right. Uh, and so like, you move yeah. around the map like that. Right, 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 right. I understand. Excellent stuff. And so what we're really here to look at are some of the miniatures. So you can see you get two nice kind of thick cardboard boxes with miniatures in and I'll show off some of the lesser miniatures first but you can see some incredible detail on the miniatures some nice dice custom dice nice thick custom dice but here we are here's some um, the actual miniatures I'll pick out good old Ornstein maybe to show off to you and I'll hand Matt one of the giant sentinels for him to look at so um, Ooh, right let's, uh, let's get a look ham review on there uh, here's uh, Ornstein who you'll be able to see maybe put your hand on behind him maybe so there we go. got some serious detail with Ornstein there let's see we want the the near one no that is you that's me that is me there's Matt Uh, yeah, and there's the giant sentinel there and um, what you may not be able to pick you up at the moment but there is some incredible texture and detail on all of them so like the the axe for example of the giant sentinel you've just seen there's some quite intricate curved um like inlay and engraving like grass almost trying to get it so it doesn't <laughs> thing is if you don't put your hand behind it, it, it does, the camera doesn't focus on it probably there you go there you are you can see there the like the plumage just on the plumage there on Ornstein is incredible like the detail they've put some serious attention to detail in all of these got some of the got some player characters here as well so I'm assuming Matt's going to be a knight or a warrior so I'll let him have a look at those of two of course so that's actually the herald there's your assassin and there is so there's your knight to have a look at let's, uh, and your warrior let's get back on here knight and warrior so there you go Some real detail on there so like the assassin model has one of the buckler shields from dark souls with the four um raised circles as well he's even holding it quite close to his chest as though he's actually trying to defend his body sorry i'm not sure this is it just wants to focus on other things the camera just wants to focus on other stuff doesn't it doesn't make it look... move it even closer move it right up to it that's even closer, put the model even closer. Let's try it. Yeah, you have no choice but to focus. Look at me! <laughs> Look at me! Oh, oh, it nearly had it. Oh! Uh, uh, it's looking at me. It's not looking at. One minute. It has to be. One minute. You can do this. Ah, there we go. There we are. Look at that. There we go. 
can see you've got like got the wooden markings on the wooden shields as well the the cape has some real texture and some serious good soft repainting right there yeah exactly let's see we'll get this guy again because i don't think he there's the knight you can see some oh eventually when this camera starts behaving dude make the thing do it come on come on come on come on come on so the board game isn't nearly as hard as getting this camera to focus <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, okay. some incredibly detailed models set the player characters aside there. But the main thing that I think everyone was was most interested in when it came to this game was the larger scale models. And these aren't even the largest scale, so there are some larger models that you can buy as extras, um, such as the Gaping Dragon, for example. Some real seriously detailed and immense models and miniatures. Aha! Sorry, I've just worked out something that was missing when I was unpacking all of this a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, that's good for us to do later. So, what everybody really cares about are the proper... I think miniatures almost does them an injustice, given the... Bigatures. Yes. Bigatures. Mediatures. So, hand over the Outrider. So, if we'll show off the Outrider Knight here. Again, got some real kind of there you go. look at the detailing there on the shoulder pads. And one thing you won't be able to quite make out, but we'll get it even closer. Look at that on the helmet. Uh, we'll, we'll try again on the New Yorkism to me. Give him to me. All right. Oh, there you go. There you are. I can see, um, aside from Matt's thumb there, that we've got some serious detail on the helmet there's the hand it wants to focus on these ones now go away <laughs> there you go there you are and like yeah little ridges in the armor and on the grip there of the sword absolutely beautiful kind of carving well not carving obviously but got absolutely beautiful set there there must be a better way what happens with this There you are. There we go. Perfect. Look at the, look at the detail that's involved there. <laughs> right. Come yeah, on, Matt. What? <laughs> this is what you get when you have temperamental webcams. There we go. <laughs> not yep, and you can see even the sword there is designed to be a little bit chipped. Some real beautiful. I'm going to hand you the gargoyle now. So, cause some of the detail on the gargoyle, again, is incredible. So like the the wings have, are ragged and have holes in them. You've got individual teeth, the kind of speckling there on the shield. And if Matt turns it around and shows you, even its tail, just like in the Dark Souls game, even its tail is an axe. And yeah, kind of just very visceral and detailed are the miniatures. Like they really help well hopefully as we play through they're really going to help breathe life into the whole game um these are going to be good to paint man yeah like somebody's already been telling me that i need to start painting these it's never going to happen but <laughs> I, I, I get why because they, they look perfect for um somebody to like paint because the, the just the sheer quality of them is immense really genuinely immense oh let me see the guy with the big hammer oh you want to see smile all right, I'll show you Smao. We've already seen Ornstein, so I'll show you Smao, the other part, the classic duo from the original game. He's got balls for chin. He's got a ball yep, chin. He, he does. Has, he, he does has, have a ball chin. He has. You can see, look at the detail on his hammer as well. And he's even got his nipples as per the game. See the individual toes on his um, shoes. Just some wonderful, wonderful detail there. The good old biggie. You need one of those like circular table things. That's yeah, of... like a ramekin. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Like just genuinely, 
as soon as I open like open this for the first time, because I couldn't quite wait clearly for this stream, but as soon as I opened this for the first time, just blown away by the real quality that's on show. So there's no point having quality miniatures like that if you're not actually going to use them. So that's what we're going to do in this stream. So time to play. So, time to get good. As they say. Okay. Move all this stuff out of the way. So there, it's not a, it's not a dungeon master game. It's you play nope. against the game. We play against the game. So we are essentially cooperators who will be playing against a random environment set of environments. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pick a character. So. I did assume, Matt, you want to be the knight or the warrior. Have a look at the difference. Now, every character has a set of um, different stats. So, somewhat similar to the game, you've got your strength, dexterity, intelligence, and faith. These are here to determine what weapons and spells you can wield. You've also got another stat here, which is your um, essentially your speed. It's how quick you are at reacting. I'm going to go for the warrior. You also have an ability in the top right here. Just you might want to know as well. Every character does something different. So the assassin can once per spark, and we'll talk about sparks, after they have dodged someone, they can make a free attack. So that's quite a valuable one. And we've got here the... Um, got here the... Oh, now we've got here the Herald, and the Herald is, is an ability that gets better, I think, with more characters. So it's Perseverance. So when you use this, can't quite see that, but um, when the character uses this ability, every character gains back two stamina. And we'll talk about stamina and health later, but clearly that will be kind of more beneficial the more players that you have. So multiple different kind of sets of information that are on here. So you'll have cards for your armor, for example, as you can see there. You've got cards for your weapons. Um, you've got tokens here with, for different abilities. So this one here will show you whether you've used this ability or not. So you can only use it once per spark. You've got here your ember, which enable you to do, I think it's a um, reroll or something like that. This is your Estus Flask, as everyone will recognize. So once per spark again, you can use this to heal back some damage. And finally, there's a luck token that lets you do a reroll once per spark as well. Same again for the warrior. So everyone has a set of starting stats, some starting equipment. And as pretty much like the Dark Souls game, you kind of go through killing things, hoping to get some treasure and hoping again that you can actually use the treasure that you pick up. Okay, so I'm going to be the warrior then. You're going to be the warrior then. I'll be the warrior. Okay, so the warrior's special ability lets them once per turn. Um, let's just read that through again. Um, they can move for free without spending any stamina. And the next attack they do, which has a range zero, also costs no stamina. And hits everybody on that node. So it's quite a good one. I think I'm going to go for the... Uh, no. Now this is where I'm already making the decisions. Because the knight has some better abilities for blocking, taking less damage. But the assassin will be better for us for doing more damage. Oh, okay. So actually I might give the assassin a go. So there we have character sheet. Put that off to one side because like, weirdly, I think this lovely geek and sun table might not quite be big enough for the game. That's how sprawling this game is going to end up being. Uh, I was going to say, I just realised we, we haven't got our lights on. We haven't got the lights on? Where's the little the doofer? Where's the the doofer? doofer? Is that the doofer? That is the doofer. Give a doofer. <laughs> For those at home, a doofer is a remote. I think that's an Irish thing. Doofer! Doofer! Woo! Right, put my character down here. So, the way the game is played is... so. I am my assassin, and you are your warrior. 
starting there at the beginning. Okay, so will it start off over there and sprawl out in this direction? Yeah, it's only a five tile game. No, four tiles. So it'll be one, two, three, four. Or okay. one, two, three, four, or something like that. Do I move that camera over there so we, we can have the multiple thing up? Move it where, sorry, like here? Yeah, just point it down at the, uh, the board. So it's not at an angle. <laughs> there? Yeah, so move it there. to the left. Well, it'll be to the right, maybe. No. So turn it, so looking at the board. At this, <laughs> I don't understand, I'll Matthew. I'll tell you what, Sean, I'll do it. How about you be a bit more clear, Matthew? <laughs> right, put away my two um, extra characters here. Don't need them. Right, yep, so as you can see there, we've got like the Firelink Shrine. Again, very much based on Dark Souls 3, rather than um, any of the others. There we are, putting these two away. Brilliant stuff. Right, so this is where we're going to check with the rules, to be 100%, because this is our first playthrough. So it may be that we get screamed and shouted at, but we're doing this wrong but we'll get this all out and set all right, we've got all that for later as well so finish up the so it's a very very detailed game clearly there's a lot here so very first start is our tile setup so the bonfires at the table and we need the boss tiles and everything like this so again, this is not a game for the faint-hearted. I've talked about this being, um, yeah, that it's not quite going to be the 90 minutes that it claims to be. Especially when we're stumbling across the rules. Yes. Oh, let's actually connect this up. We need to have the doors connecting to one another. So hopefully you'll be able to enjoy watching us get good. completely different setup. Yeah. And then finally go there. And we are gonna to need to have another tile there, Matt. So and where is the mini boss? Tile is there. Right, even we'll end up going to six tiles for a full boss if we get that far because we may not so there's the standard setup with the tiles we have got our little fog gate um, tile here as well just to represent that this is how you actually enter into the mini boss so as you can see there we've got a logical flow through with the fog gate again classic of the dark souls game now we get a number of sparks. This is show. This is essentially our lives, our ability to come back from the dead when we inevitably are handed our asses. It will happen at least two or three times. Setting that's up now. So you can actually connect the sparks and everything like that. Um, with something that's been provided that I discovered during the course of the opening. So there's these nice little um, plastic things here that enable us to connect together the two discs. So we have one disc there which goes on top and shows us the number of lives we get. So we get four lives because there lives. are two of us. And then, yep, so that is three, well, four attempts of four ways of dying, basically. So we can look forward to that. There we go. Connected pretty damn nicely there. So that goes here. Goes on the bonfire. Start out with four lives. Now we need to select which boss 
we're going to find in which mini boss. Now the bosses and mini bosses are represented by cards. Some very nice high detail cards here. So do you fancy fighting a sentinel? Do you fancy fighting a so oh well, these are the normal enemies. Right, yeah, so do you these were the models over here. So we have got a Titanite Demon, a Gargoyle, a Winged Knight, and an Outrider Knight. So which one do you want to face as our mini boss? Uh, are they harder? Or what's... They all, they're all about the same difficulty. They all have different... Like This is the kind of point of the um, replayability of the game. Each of the four is going to behave differently based on the cards and the order that they're put in. So these cards represent the behaviour. Alright. They're all the same difficulty. So it's just basically whichever one you like the sound of. Yeah, the Outrider Knight sounds pretty cool. Outrider Knight, excellent. So that's the Gargoyle. And there's the Outrider Knight. Brilliant. So put aside the cards for the Outrider Knight. Thankfully we won't be worrying about any other mini bosses. And then comes to the actual boss themselves. Now there's Two bosses, again, there's the Dancer of the Boreal Valley and Ornstein and Smell. That's, that's a double boss, but they are the same boss, as it were. So they're one boss, but there's two enemies you fight at the same time. Uh, let's go for the one. We'll not do the... Go for the one. Yeah, we'll not yeah. Do the don't blame me for that one. There's an interesting set of behaviours go along with that. There is an extra one in there. And there. So now we don't need those cards. Now there should be some space Special treasure cards. Now let's find where they are. So this boss, so again, complex, but we will work this through, don't worry. Ah, I see. Right, so these are all your treasure cards. Lots and lots of different treasure cards. Because it's a very, very complex game. Oh. One of the things, one of the criticisms I'm going to have here is that it would have been nicer to have some of these cards separated a bit more. Um, I appreciate that they um, that they've basically gone for saving space rather than anything else, but it does make it a little awkward for um, what we're doing here. So there's the two cards. Right, okay, there we are. So are these bosses. No, that's a mini boss or an enemy actually. Yeah, I think that's just a normal enemy. Those are the bosses. Ah, uh, right, okay. Okay, so take out all of these treasure, which are specific to bosses. So, how much does this cost? So, backing this cost 100 and. No, no cost 80 pounds. Yeah. Um, to back, I have then um, splurged out on extra for the um, one of the expansions that they're already selling at um, launch. Has that come through yet, or is it? Sorry. No. So the there's a load of more extras which are to come for this. Quite a lot more extras which are to come. Um, at least sort of another seven or eight boxes, but. They are due in October. They're not quite due yet. So I'm going to give you, Matt, your starting items. And I will take my starting items as well. Mike's just fiddling around with the cameras there. 
So there are encounters which we have here. So these are the cards that determine what we're going to fight at each stage. Okay, you start off with some simple encounters at the beginning and then you have after you've beaten the first boss, well, if we beat the first boss, you start again, different encounters, yep. and they're harder. So there's my character. Put them over here and give them... So every character should start with a, um, like a shield or something similar, and a weapon, and some armor. And we'll explain all the stats that go along with all of this as we go along. But we're just finishing our setup now. Um, so. so it's a two-player game. So we now need to put in our... This is very, very complex, sadly. I apologise to everyone. This is just quite a complex setup. Because, again, the cards aren't really in the best of orders. Damn you, Steam Forge! Damn yeah, you! That is what I would say, that unfortunately your cards are a little bit all over so, the place. I'm a quick shifty dive here. Near. So it is. So, let's see if we find all the common items. What I might end up having to do this is just kind of fix some of this um, complexity and end up um, getting a load of rubber bands and separating these all out so we don't have this. I think with a lot of games like that, you know, but it's enough. Fantasy Flight are quite good for having organised things. So. I think those are some boss weapons because they're marked differently. Just try to separate these all. Right, okay. Right, those are warrior. We I I'm beginning to see now. These are warrior weapons. So what is it you're doing? What is it you're sorting so out? I'm now trying to sort out our treasure deck. So we've got to be careful because um, if we don't sort this treasure deck out, we end up getting a load of treasure that we can't actually use. So oh, we're okay. supposed to... Is it based on your level? No, it's based on your class. Oh, okay. So every class... Yep. There we are. So every class has their own particular um, items that can get put in. And you also then have the main treasure itself. So that's why I'm going through and just separating all this treasure out. Yeah, I think we now have a normal treasure deck here. Let's finish off section three. Yeah, so we've now got a normal treasure deck. So Matt, I'm gonna give you that so that you can shuffle it, please. Shuffle the treasure deck, shuffle. Yep, and so we end up with a lot of spare items which are for classes that we aren't. Right, okay. Actually. Actually, Matt, I've just given you the knight weapons in that, so you've just shuffled those in. I think I've ruined that. Oh, yeah. no. Okay, I'll be a knight then. No, actually, I've given you the... <laughs> yeah, I have messed that up, unfortunately. Right. So what is it we're... What I've got? just done is I have just given you the wrong character class to put in. So we're going to have to go through. Well, who's is it? And I'll be that person. It's the Herald. So it's the what, the healer. Okay, I'll be the healer then. All right, we'll change you over to the healer. That does mean I need to find the healer items now. 
So, give me, yeah, turn those three cards. Okay. Right, so. I am the Herald. You are the Herald. So, um, that is one item. It is. Now I need to go back through that deck because I need to find what I've ruined there. So again, this I'd say there's um it's almost too much too many treasure cards here. There's too much choice for us because I, I've very clearly made a mistake there that's um damaged the whole thing. Sadly. But we can go through and get that sorted. One thing they have done is that the cards on the back of all these treasure items, you can actually see difference between normal treasure and a starting item so that does help quite a bit and right that's okay we'll find Matt's starting items then which should be somewhere around here um, okay Ah, here they are. Right, one, two, three. Right, they are. Matt's starting items are here. Is that? Yes. So you get two um, starting items for your one hand, and you get your spear and your. So that's you've sorted, and that's our treasure pile sorted nicely now. Uh, we've got. Away. We've got um, our characters. Slamming, <laughs> You'll close this gate. Right, so what we're going to do now is... We... Door open. We are going to hand out the tokens. So we've already gone and pre-separated out our tokens. So you'll hear that's Matt's security door. It talks to him. It's... There's nobody else, nobody else will. As he says. So we put now now some tokens which help represent the way that the game is going to be played. So you start off with a talisman, a coin, an Estus flask. Oh, oh, there you are. Bright blue lights. Bright blue light. That doesn't. You've got shiny boards. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Or make it look like. Doesn't quite help us, sadly. Right, so as per the game, every character has their Estus Flask. Every character gets their special ability. Well, it's not as per the game, really. And every character has a coin that they can spend, which gives them one reroll. So, we now separate out... Oh. And let's set up some encounters. So for we want two level ones and two level twos. Yes, two level ones, two level twos. It looks like. Or, or do we get? Does the mini boss count as an actual? One, two, three, four. Right. So, let's separate ourselves into the three classes of encounter, and put on a, a random card for each of these actually and then level two and level two and we're going to face the outrider knight as our mini boss so let's get him out now very very carefully I like how Matt has decided to leave that light out. Perfect. Right, so let's have him ominously, or her, ominously waiting for us there. Now you will see that the mini, the medium chairs have on their bases, they've got a cross, and that helps mark helps to mark what direction they're in. Um, as we go through, we'll see that it actually also affects the um, attacks that they do and where you are at risk of damage. That's part of the um, set of 
tactics around the bosses is that you learn their behaviours and that you try and avoid where they're going to damage. You, you stay in the safe spots. Are these meant to be in the same hand, by the way? Um, I mean, they can go either way around, but your shield and your talisman should be in the same hand, and you can swap between the two, and your um, spear should be in t'other hand. T'other hand. T'other. Um, t'other hand. In yep. t'other hand. Yep. Right, and that is then our setup. Right, and that's then how we go through, is we go through the game, we take on each of the encounters, so we'll take on this one, this one, this one. Once we've taken on this one, we've got the um, shortcut unlocked, so we don't need to do those two again. And then take on this one, and then fight our mini-boss to our death. Okay. So, we will start out, we both enter on, I believe... That no, that's a terrain node, so we will both enter here. There we are, me and Matt huddling together, desperate, fearful, knowing that what is to come will not be well, it should hopefully be fun, but it won't be easy, I guess, is the main thing. It will not be easy at all. So, we can say that we've got our cards all sorted. Great stuff. Okay. So, Matt, do you want to do the honours and turn over our first card, see who we're going to be facing? Okay, so... so that card here. there, yep. Okay, so what does it read? Uh, hollow Cave. Oh, sorry, Hollow Cave. And then... Okay, so, well, so what I'll show to everyone here is the way that this is set up. So I'll put that right up there. So you can see there, it's called the Hollow Cave. It gives us that we have two enemies here, which are going to be on the same spot. One enemy that will be on that spot, a barrel and a treasure chest. So we have in our future a treasure chest. Whee! So we need to get three of our little hollows, which are down here. These are the normal hollows. They are not the ones with any special abilities, like, um, well, actually, there's only two sets of hollows that come with the base game. There's the standard hollows, and then there's the crossbow hollows. Standard hollows, run at us, basically, like the normal hollows. The crossbow hollows will shoot the fuck out of us. So that's a nice, simple start-up. We'll get our hollow soldier card here. Each of the lesser NPCs, the normal ones, they have just a single card, which explains all of their abilities, their damage, what they're going to do, things like that. So the two hollows go on the sword. And then the one hollow goes on the crossed swords. Okay. So we started right next to the two, so we're already in a bit of trouble. We also have a barrel, which is going to be put on the symbol of the sun. So we'll put our barrel down. There's our treasure chest. No, there's our barrel. So our barrel goes here, and our treasure chest goes there. Now, the way the game operates is that we have each of these nodes here one of which is covered by a barrel. You can move from this, from a node to any node around it as one action. You can then move further as another action by spending more stamina. This is where we should talk about the way that the game actually works and how it handles stamina and health. Oh, probably shouldn't have done that with my character which I'd set up lovely there. Well done, Sean. Yeah, well done, Sean. Well done, Sean. Well done, Sean. So, let's sort that back out. And there we go. Right, so let's show you with a character who isn't currently actually set up. So, along the bottom there, as I'm showing you, you can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is it 9 or 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 
squares. Those squares represent a combined stamina and health bar. So when you do actions, they cost stamina. And then at the beginning of every turn, you get two stamina back. However, if the middle, if the two bars meet, you have died. Oh, okay. So you've got to be careful with your stamina and your health. Interesting. So, what happens is every round, one of us, one of the two of us, will get a go. Yeah. We'll get. We can move one square for free. You can move more squares for more stamina cost. You then get make an attack. The attacks that you can make are based on what is in your hand. So you should see in on each of your cards, and I will show off with my S stock. Here are the attacks that you can do as basic. So if that can focus, please. Put your hand behind it. Come on. And down. Please. <laughs> please. There we are, it's focused. Right, so you'll see there's two options there. There's one with zero in brackets. That costs zero stamina. So for me in this S doc, you've got, I can roll two black die, but I take one damage away from the result. That costs me zero stamina. Or for three stamina, I can roll three of the black die okay. and still take away one from the result. Okay. You also have items like range. So in the top left, you should see there's a little um, weapon symbol, which then has a number associated with it. So that is your range. So my S stock is range zero, means I have to be on the same node as whatever I'm attacking in order to do it. Matt, your spear should have range one, I believe. Uh, that one there? Yep. Yep, one. Yeah. One, excellent. You've also got on here some information about how much um, strength, dex, intelligence, and um, faith that you need to wield an item. And along the bottom there, you have some information about kind of blocking and so on. This talisman I've got here, it says all characters within range, uh, within range gain one stamina. Is that the range there, range zero? No, that's the cost. So zero, okay. So zero, for zero stamina... Oh, it's range two, right? I yes, it's that. range two. So for zero stamina, you can give yourself and me one stamina back. Yeah, or I can give six stamina at range three. Yes. Not no, range three, at, at for three. For three. For three. So, so you pay three stamina, and you give six stamina back to someone else. Right. So if I go absolutely banzai, um, then you can heal me, right, basically. Right, right. Or alternatively, you can use your um, shield. Now, what you do need to do... Theoretically, is you need to pick one of the two for the start of this, and then you keep with that one until we go back to base. Right. So, so do you want to have a shield, or do you want to be able to heal us? I think I'll heal. Heal? This. Okay, yep. great. Fantastic. Okay, so now we need to look at options. So I'm going to refresh myself on this. Um, I'm just going to be honest here, because it's not the simplest of matters simple simon says right yes so at the start of your turn so which one of us do we want to, actually actually I'm, you probably. I'm i'm the assassin i go first anyway because i have a higher um speed than you so i will be going first and we did show that by giving me this lovely little token here Nice little sun medal, which determines that I am the one who is currently it going, but it also means that for some enemies, I am the one who is being targeted. Right, okay. Now, enemy behavior works like this. So each enemy, basic enemy, has a card that details what they're going to do movement-wise and what they're going to do attack-wise. So this... But I'll go first yep. <laughs> before the enemies. But the way it works is I go, then the enemies go, yep. then Matt goes, then the enemies go. So the enemies get a go for every player. Bless you, Matt. 
So what I want to do, now I have a, um, I have a zero range weapon, so I need to share a tile with the enemies I'm attacking in order to hit them. I am going to make a step forward. I'm going to share that node. Now, you can only have three characters on the same node. So we have one, two, three now. So Matt can't join that node with me, but he probably wouldn't want to because he's got a ranged weapon anyway. And why would he want to be there? Oh, I've just noticed that we haven't given you the right character, Matt. What? You've still got your warrior. Say what? Say what? Say what? Right, give you your spear back. There you are. I've got it. Matt is now updated. Speary McSpearington. Speary McSpearington. Indeed. <laughs> um, where have the dice gone? There they are. Perfect. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to spend a bunch of stamina. Cause I want to do a good amount of damage here, okay. basically. So I'm going to spend stamina. Now the dice, as you can see here, they have... A blank side they have one two three singles and one two doubles so there's a one in six chance of missing one in three chance of doing two damage and the rest is hard kind of normal okay now again hopefully I'll move this as a, as a dice rolling cam right now as we keep going this will start making more and more sense and be a bit quicker but this hollow soldier they have as you can see in the middle there one health and one resistance so i need to essentially do the resistance is how much damage they get taken off every attack they take okay so because they've got one health one resistance i need to do two damage right. okay yep so i have moved i am going to do my attack now yep and okay. so i am going to actually i might no no i'm gonna go i'm gonna go banzai Banzai. I want to make certain that we actually kill these things. Oh, it's one thing that actually it's fine. We can do that in a second. No worries. So we put down three black tiles to represent the fact that I am spending three stamina. Yeah. As you can see now, I'm part way to death already. So if you get up, what? How does? How do you die again? How does it? So mean? if the if you if the two bars meet in the middle, you die. Okay, right. So, so what's, the, what's this one up here, the red one? That's health. Health. All oh, right. If your health eats your stamina, all right. Okay. If your health it meets your stamina, you die. Right. Okay. So going over the top, dealing, rolling three dice. We're looking to do a minimum of two damage here. Oh my god! That is six damage. Who's Basically, a waste of my goddamn stamina. But there we are. That then kills one of these things. So there we are. We've killed our first enemy. Huzzah! Huzzah. Now, because I've gone, it's now time for the enemies to get a go. Now, the enemies are going to behave as per that behavior that I've just shown everyone on the card. Now, this works slightly differently again. So, the, beha the movement is here. So this dictates that they will move one space. I love the way it's kind of like a directional key part. Uh, yes, idea. exactly. Yeah. One space towards, and this represents the nearest. Now, different ones can be different things. Like they can go towards the person with the aggro token, things like that. So this one is already, as you can see, by the nearest. Doesn't need to move. This one moves to there. So that it is now closer to the nearest person. Who yep. is me? All right. Okay. Now it is going. The one that is on me, it's got a range of zero, as we can see there. So just like me, it's got a range of zero, so it can only attack those who are sharing the same node as it. That would be me. So it doesn't need to roll. It automatically does the amount of damage that is shown on there. Four, of them. Four damage. Now I can take that like a champ. I can attempt to block it. Except I don't have a good card for blocking. Um, my shield doesn't let me roll anything to block damage. As you can see, there's a zero there. Matt's shield lets him roll one to block damage, which isn't great. 
but it's better than nothing. Okay. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to dodge. Now, the way dodging works is you get to use a dodge dice for each of the um, things on your character. So I have my assassin's armor, which gives me one dodge dice. I have my target shield, which gives me one dodge dice. So I roll two dodge dice. Now they are both 50-50s, as you can see, half and half, blank and not blank. So I have to spend one stamina to dodge. Yep. And if I fail, it hits me anyway. Okay. So it's a high risk, high reward. But the difficulty of the dodge is again represented there. It's only one. So out of my two dice, I need to get one successful dodge. So it's a 50-50 chance. It's a bit over 50-50. It should be about a three and four chance. Okay, right, okay. So we're going to roll. Yay! There we are. One dodge. So it does no damage to me, but I have to put down another um, of the stamina tokens. Where have I put that in there? Another stamina token, because I have sp spent that for another action. Now, what I could do with my assassin ability is I could use that to then do a free attack with no stamina cost. I'm not going to, because we can only do that once per life. And ideally, we really want to save that for maybe one of the harder ones, like this one, rather than kind of wasting it early on. So I'm just going to leave that. Have you lost my, uh, my, my windshield for your microphone already? Oh my god, is that gone? Oh. Oh no! I give you equipment. And you just throw it around. Can't imagine where that's. Well, it's definitely in here. That's the main yes, thing. It's right, definitely it's, it's in definitely this room. In here, yeah. Right, and then that is my turn done. It's now Matt's turn. Right. Okay. So, as my guy has a range of one, it I could hit them from here. You don't. Yeah, you don't have to move at all. You can stay where you are, and you can hit it. Right. Okay. Let's go. So I'll do that then. Uh, Saying that, can I only do one thing? With you can the... only do one of those attacks, yes. So I can either do give stamina or do an attack. So it's probably best doing an attack. So, uh, so it's one black dice plus one for three stamina or just one black dice for zero stamina. So you need to do two damage. All right, I will do the I will do the, the the double thing then. So two black dice. Two black dice. So one of the things that we'll see is as we get better weapons, we roll better dice. So the orange dice are by far the better one. Two. Hey, two damage. So we'll now give you your three stamina cubes. One, two, three. That's that then. Done. Nice and simple. Done. Okay, now it's the enemy's turn. Enemy's going to do the exact same behaviour. Just going to move one towards the nearest. And it's going to attack me again, doing four damage. I have no choice but to again dodge. So I am going to dodge. So I will spend the one here. Now, even if this hits me, this isn't game over. But I will be in severe trouble. Oh, that's why you've got a healer with you. That's why I've got a healer with us. So, again, we'll roll... Does your armor not do anything, give you anything? My armor gives me the extra dodge dice. Ah, right, okay. So I've got, I get two dodge dice. It does actually, um, if I decide to block, it gives me one black dice. I think it actually takes one damage away from me as well. But I, see, let me the, check my stats. Yeah, I get a plus one attack dice with my armor. Let me check the exact armor stats here. So equipment icons. No, so the... Um, what that means is that it gives you you've got one upgrade you can do to it so there's upgrades in the treasure deck that uh, let you upgrade your armor right okay and yes it also does yes it gives you one block dice so you you actually with your shield you get two block dice oh, okay cool but your shield can't be upgraded i think oh no sorry Right, so your block dice, I apologise. So there's two types of damage. Yep. Again, we're learning this. There's physical damage and magical damage. Right. 
Your armor gives you one block dice for physical, one block dice for magical. Okay. But your shield gives you one block dice for physical and none for magical. Right, 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 right. This here is how many upgrades you can do. So we can't do any upgrades to our armor at base level, but that's that's what you'd expect because it's crap armor. This one says one beside it? No, that is how many dodge dice it gives you. Ah, right, okay. So there's weapons that give you dodge dice as well. Okay. So, but let's roll. Again, one. We've managed to avoid the damage, so I've taken no damage there. It's now my turn. Yep. First thing we do at the start of my turn is I get back two stamina. So that's all fine. Yep. And then I'm going to attack. I don't want to move. There's no need to move. I'm going to attack. I'm going to do a three stamina attack again. But I'm not actually going to put the stamina things out because when this hits, and it will almost certainly hit, this round is over. And then we we'll cover off what happens when you beat it so okay. roll there we are five damage more than enough poor little hollow guy you're is dead done. okay so now that we've beaten that let's just check through what happens when you win an encounter we won an encounter so the, obviously this is the british deck is there like is there any different differences i'm other guessing than... yeah the yanks will have a different deck and things like that yeah Let's have a look. All right, so ending an encounter here. Yep, so you actually heal up fully when uh, you actually know you heal. Yeah, you, you get rid of all your stamina at yep. the end of that. So. We then put those back. Oh yeah, you might as well keep those in fairness. Right. And we get two souls each for having beaten that enemy. The souls are around here somewhere. There we are. So we get two souls each. So that is then four souls for us. And so one, two, three, and four souls. We now also get to open up the treasure chest. Woot, woot, woot. So let's see what how the treasure chest works. Right, so yep, we draw two cards from the treasure chest. So Matt, you draw one and I'll draw one. This one? Yep. Okay. I have got an umbrella dagger. Excellent. Not an umbrella, an umbral dagger. Umbral, umbral dagger. Umbral oh, dagger. that sounds like it might be for my character. Oh, that's a very good character. Very good one. Oh my god! Right, so we've drawn those now, and we can see um, what's actually required to do that. So Matt has drawn the umbral dagger. That's an incredibly high-level item. Um, I would need, and it's so it's probably for me because of the um, decks and um, faith. Well, because of the decks requirements, but the faith might work for you as well. So you're going to need thirty odd decks, thirty odd faith, in order to use that. It gives you a dodge dice, does it? Yeah, it gives you one dodge dice, and it can be upgraded. It's range zero. It's got three different attacks. So for zero stamina, you can roll a blue dice, mm. minus one. For two stamina, oh, for two stamina, you can roll an orange dice, minus one. And for three stamina, no, two orange dice, I think. Two orange dice, yeah. And then for three stamina, you roll one blue, two orange, minus one. So that does a hell of a lot of damage. But we're going to have to level up a lot in order to use that. We'll cover off leveling up when we get back towards the um so uh what do i do with this to get my map sack i or? just keep it yeah just kind of hold it to one side it doesn't really do What's this stuff here so those are for your upgrades so that uh, when you get upgrades you put them underneath your item and can you hold as many as you want you can hold as many um items as you want but you can't wield them oh. except right at the beginning i've drawn the composite bow now the composite bow needs 15 strength and 21 dexterity to use 
for zero cost, I can up to range four, do two black dice minus one, and for three, I can do three black dice minus one. So this would make me into a ranged character. Now, I'm relatively close to using that, so I think I'm gonna want that for me. And that's the treasure chest opened. Okay. And that's that done. So where did I put the encounter? The encounter goes there. And that's that done. So now we go on to the next room. This room is the Shattered Dungeon. This one doesn't have a treasure chest for us. It will have a barrel there and a barrel here. <laughs> we don't enter into a good position on this one. It starts off with a A hollow there, and two crossbow hollows. No. Who are both? Come on, mate! Don't get out. There. So we're in a bit of trouble there, because we're surrounded immediately. Now I've already shown off the hollow soldier. The crossbow hollow has different um, way of working. So I'll show you that there. So they have range infinity, so they can hit you from everywhere. Their movement actually moves them away from the player. They have no resistance, so they just have one health full stop. And they do three magic damage. So you can't really block easily with that one. They only do magic damage. Right, so what happens now is because I... I'm now basically going to go first every time and that kind of moves between the two of us because I was the first off. If there was more players, it would go clockwise after the first person who um, right, right, was right. the fastest. So if we move our camera over a little bit, we'll give you a slightly better shot of what's happening. There. Great. So I go first and so um, I am going to go... Yeah, now I'm trying to think what our special abilities are like here. So, I think best bet is to kill these guys off. So I'm going to go here. And I'm not going to use the stamina, because this might end up quite bad, don't know. So I'm just going to do a normal attack. One damage, but that's enough to kill one of the crossbow hollows. Nice. Oop. And then I just knock over some of Matt's equipment. Okay, and now the enemies are going to go. So the crossbow hollow is going to move away from me specifically. You know, one away from me. And then it's going to shoot at me. Now this, this is again, slightly different behavior. You can see the skull there. This means that the crossbow hollow only goes for the person who's just had a go. So it will literally always ignore that. Only goes for me. That's going to shoot me. It's going to do three magic damage. I am going to. What am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to try and dodge it again. So, again, the difficulty of the dodge is one. I get two dice. Roll. And that's a dodge. Dodge it! Two. That's a dodge. And now the other hollow is going to go. Now the hollow soldier goes towards the nearest person. The nearest person is Matt. Yeah. So it goes towards Matt and it's going to attack Matt. Bollocks. So now Matt has to choose whether to dodge or whether to try and block. Well, I can. I get two sets of block dice then, do you? So you, my shield and my yes, armor. Yes, you get two block dice. So you can attempt to block instead. Yeah, should I do that? Because it's more likely to... It's less likely to fail spectacularly, but you, so if you dodge, and you, so your dodge is, you've got one dodge dice. So yeah, you, your dodge is sort of a 50-50 chance. Yeah. You're either gonna take four damage or none. Yeah. If you block, you're gonna block between zero damage and you could block all four. Okay. So it's either all or nothing, or a percentage of the damage. Uh, well, it's gonna be, yeah, I'll just give us the two dice. All right, so, so Block then, so Matt's going to roll his two dice to block. There you are, three. So Matt blocks three damage and he takes one. So 
So we'll give you one red. Our first red. <gasps> Heal health. No, you so. only heal stamina. Okay. And that's my turn done. So now it's Matt's turn. Well, Mofo, I guess it's time to have at him. Uh, with. Uh, might as well for three stamina. So I get two dice with my spear. Yep. Okay. Have back at him then. So this gives this gets hard then because basically as soon as I start losing life, I can use less stamina. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. 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 So you start having to think about it. Exactly. Yeah. There we are. Two damage, and so Hollow Soldier once again falls by the wayside. Now what's going to happen is the whole soldier is going to go. So it's going to go one away and it goes for Matt. So you can choose to either try and dodge this, dodge difficulty of one, or if you try and block it, now you don't get any block dice from your shield. Yeah, I'll try and dodge it then. I try guess. and dodge it. Okay, so that's one stamina for dodging. I'll give you your stamina cube. It's cost of one stamina for your dodge. And then you roll your two dodge dice. Is it two dodge dice or one dodge dice? So you should have one from your sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah. it was one dice. One dice. One dice. No. Oh, no. So you now take three damage. No. As well. One, two, three. Cheers. Crap. Crapo. Crapper. Okay. And so now it's my turn. It's fine. We'll go through in a sec, but you'll be able to heal that back. But that's not... It's it's fine. It's what your Estus Flask is for. But Matt's in a bad position now. He's only got two damage or two stamina away from actual death. Right, okay. So if there was more enemies, we'd be in trouble. Yes. But there's yes. only one. So now it's my turn. I'm going to move one. And I'm going to attack. I'm going to go all out because there's no point not doing it. Just guarantee. There we are. Three damage. It's dead. Yo. Okay, and so now all stamina damage comes back. So you heal your four stamina damage. Yep. And now, what you can do, Matt, is you can use your Estus Flask. So that is your orange token there. Yep. If you turn that over, you can heal all of your damage back. But you can only do that once per life. Okay. Let me just check 100% actually if you do heal your re your health or not at the end of a an encounter. So you can't pick up more flasks or anything like that? No, you can't, no. Encounter setup. Um, what's this actually, one? no, you heal automatically. So actually turn that back over, you heal automatically. So That's just, cool. All right, cool. so after each encounter, yes. you heal them out. Okay. okay, and now we get two souls character so that's another four souls that we get for doing that so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put the five soul token down and what are these souls for these are for leveling up and I think we can also buy some um, treasure random treasure with them as well and we need that for the the guy at the end we're going to need that as we go along yes definitely and it also levels up which gives us higher stats which we can then use to wield better weapons okay cool so that's that all done so put that back here we're moving on to the next area moving on to the next area now this is going to be a tougher fight so what we're going to want to remember is that we do have our special abilities so i have my after i dodge i can um do a free attack and Matt has his ability to heal me I think oh no yeah heal all of us heal us both for two extra stamina so we step through and we face the withered peak withered peak so now we're going to see two new enemy types who we won't have fought until now the silver knight swordsman 
and the Silver Knight Great Bowman. Now, um, that's fine. Yeah, I've just noticed we've done something slightly wrong there, but it's not a problem. What was it? What have we, what have we done wrong? Just, I've, um, I've not been calculating the health quite right, but it's fine. It's not a problem. It's only a mi it's only a difference for the hollows, but like the crossbowmen. But we wouldn't it wouldn't have stopped anything from dying, so okay. it's all fine. So now we're going to set this up. This is going to be much harder, as we're about to see. So there are one, two of these guys, and one of these guys on this one. So already I'm at a disadvantage. I can't attack anything that's in that square. Why is that? Because it's full. And I've got range zero. Oh, okay. And then there's one of these guys here. And there is a bowman here as well. Crappers. So we're going to have trouble with this one. <laughs> I'm just sort of trying to focus, right. focus it. Okay. So as you can see, we've got a quite close quarters bit of combat there. And we've got a gravestone as well for the first time. So the gravestone goes there. So what does a gravestone do? So the barrels... Um, so explain the barrels you can't travel through unless you're willing to spend a point of stamina to destroy them. The gravestones can't be destroyed. So you just can't go through that square. Now that should be fine because of where it is. But obviously different ones have different places that they can be. So it's just kind of completely random as to whether it's just set dressing or whether it's a pain in the ass. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to have to go kind of quite banzai on some of this stuff because I need to do some damage right away otherwise we're in real trouble if I don't do any damage then <laughs> we're already going to lose basically so I've got to start with yeah so I'm going to walk which costs me zero stamina there I'm then going to spend one stamina to turn that into a run so that I can have the same tile as these two. I am then going to attack the... Let's look at the damage here. Now, you can see here that the Silver Knight Swords... Uh, actually, Great Bowman, which is the one that I'm sharing a space with. As you can see there, it has one health, but two... Resistance, so I'd need to do three damage to do that. So I've got to choose between taking out the soldier and taking out the silver knight great bowman. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the soldier because they actually deal about the same amount of damage. Okay, so we'll get rid of it. So I'm going to do it, roll my two dice, aiming to get. The, the hollow soldier so need two two damage hollow soldier down that's one enemy down now all of the enemies are going to go so starting with the great bowman who's right by me the great bowman is going to move one away from me and he's going to shoot me i'm going to use one stamina to dodge him I will then roll my two dodge dice. So again, difficulty of the dodge is only one. Roll, and I dodge. So that doesn't do anything. Now, the hollow soldier is going to move towards Matt. No. And yes, going to move towards Matt. Actually, no, it would be the silver knights who go first. So silver knight number one is going to move towards Matt. And he is going to attack Matt. Now, this has actually an ability to push, which you can see here. So this marker here, the shield of the arrows, means it's going to push Matt away after it's hit him. And this marker here means that if me and Matt are on the same square, we both take the damage. 
So that's another reason why I've separated away from you, Matt. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to take the damage. So it is now going to attack Matt. So it does five damage. It's a two dodge difficulty. So you cannot dodge it. Right, okay. Your only option is to block. Okay, yeah. I'll have the block then. So two, so you take three. three damage, and it knocks you one square away. Okay. Now the next one is going to do the same thing. So it's going to move towards you. It's going to attack you. So you either block it. All or right. I'll have the dude dice. Do again. So two. you block two damage. So you take three damage again, oh, no. and it pushes you back one. I need two more, uh, two more reds. Two more reds. So this is where your Estus flask is going to come in useful. But should we not need, we not need that for the end boss? No, because what I, what I say we do is when we've beaten these guys, we go back here and do some leveling up and so okay, on, okay. and spend our souls. Okay. Right, and now the hollow soldier is going to go. The hollow soldier m can only move one square, thankfully. It doesn't matter who it moves towards because it's going to go there. Okay, so now it's m my turn. Mm -hmm. Now here's a thought. Do I want to... Do I want to go after the bowman? If I don't go after the bowman, it's gonna it's gonna basic it's gonna knock us the fuck out because it's difficult to dodge. Actually, it's not too bad to dodge, but yeah, I think I'm gonna need to try and take some of the um, attention away from you, Me Matt. Getting killed. Yeah. So I heal my two stamina. Sorry, first heal my two stamina. Okay, I am going to step right into the fray. I am going to then... Now, I'm not going to spend the stamina, because I think I'm going to need it for health damage. <laughs> so, I'm going to need it for dodging. So, I'm just going to do a normal attack. Okay. Actually, I should just give you those two, and then I'll do these. So, normal attack at the hollow. Looking to get two. Oh, no! So, we only do one damage. So, it actually takes zero damage from that. Okay. Balls. Now it's the enemy's turn. Oh, brilliant. So the first thing that's going to happen is that the great bowman is going to shoot at me. It's going to do four damage, and it's a one dodge difficulty. So I'm going to spend my stamina, and I'm going to try and dodge that bugger. Yep. I do. I successfully dodge. Now the hollow soldier is already next to me going to attack me. I'm going to have to spend another stamina in order to dodge. I fail to dodge and I take four damage. Which is not a good start. One, well, two. it wouldn't be Dark Souls if you weren't getting your ass handed to you. It's true. That is very true. Three... Four. Okay, now the Silver Knight, who I'm sharing a square with, is going to attack me. I am going to do attempt to dodge it. Now, this is a two difficulty dodge, so I need to get both die. So, this is very difficult. Or you're dead, basically. Or I'm dead, yes. Um, that And that's my only option, basically. I, I am going to die if I don't make this dodge. <laughs> oh no! And oh, I no. fail to make the dodge. I die. Now, because I've died, we both die. We both come back to the beginning. Uh. These guys move back to where they were. And our eight souls get put on a... Um, where I was killed. Oh uh, no, so we've got to go back there and... We have now got to go back there. We've got to claim our souls back. And 
if we die again, we lose those souls. Now, one other thing that happens here is our number of sparks goes down. So we now have three sparks. As you can see there, we are now down to three sparks. So already we're at a significant disadvantage now. Oh, no. So I think what we might have wanted to do was not fight this yet. But even then, I think we, we, were, we were, are going to struggle with this one. This is a very tough encounter. So we're going to have to focus on one group at a time and just hope that. And I think we're going to have to use our ability. So that's why I tried to share a square so that I could dodge successfully and, and attack something. Yeah. But I failed to dodge. <laughs> okay, so we're back to our. So we're uh... back to our starting position. Now these ones are back to real as well. But we can just go straight into this because we've already beaten those two. Okay, cool. So, we join back here. And because I died, it's Matt's turn. So, let's show that a little bit more. And show just a bit more of what's happening there. So, because I died, it's Matt's turn. All right, okay. Uh... Let's see when we can use our rest of us. Yes, I'm going to have to throw dice and attack the um, one of the silver knights, I guess. Because they did the most damage. Yeah, so you can attack those without entering. So you can move first and then you can attack them without entering their square. So you could move like here, for example, and be a bit closer to them. But still, you're one away, so you can still attack Okay, we'll do that then. Okay, and so you're going to attack that's the... You, that's you, that's you. Oh, it's me, sorry. And so are you going to attack the hollow, or are you going to attack the knights? The knights, they did the most damage. Okay, right, that's fine. Right, so you, um, I, so you need to do three damage to kill them. Three damage! What, what, what? Boom! Well done to you. And so one of these buggers is dead. Great, and now it's the enemy's turn. So, the first ones to go are the swordsmen. The swordsmen move two towards... Well, they move towards me, sadly. And then it's going to attack me. So, I'm going to spend the stamina to try and dodge. And if I successfully dodge, I'm going to do my special ability. Okay. You need two. I failed to dodge, so I take... Five damage. Luckily, on my turn, I can use my Estus flask and get that back. But still, that was that was less than good. One, two, three, four, five. Right now, the hollow soldier is going to come towards me. Sadly, <laughs> it's going to attack me. I'm going to spend the one to dodge. If I somehow fail to dodge this, we have died again. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! And we've lost our souls. And we lose our souls. So those souls are gone forever. And we're back here. So we basically need to go round again. Basically, yes. We need to grind up. And now we're back to two sparks. What does that mean? That means we have two more lives left. Brill. Oh, I can't believe that. And all our souls go. So, yeah, we're going to need to go back round. So I think we'll leave these... Yeah, that's just atrocious. For the for the, for the the stream, shall we just carry on as if we... Yeah, so this is one of the um, criticisms of the game that I've seen online, is that there is a bit of grinding that's involved. What I think we'll do for the purpose of the stream is, yes, we will keep the souls there yeah. so that we're not having to grind. Yeah. And, yeah, just save a bit of time. But what we would have to do if we weren't streaming is we would have to 
go back round, beat those encounters again, yep. and then come back and fight. Yep. So, start again. Now, again, I died, so Matt goes first. Right, see, we'll see him again as last time then. So, same there. Go for one of the um, silver. silver knights. Three damage again. Bam. Absolutely fantastic. Well done to Matt. Great stuff. Okay. And now all of them go. So again, the knight is going to come there. And I need to try and dodge for one stamina. Come on. Yes! <laughs> And now I can do my free attack. And because I, can, I don't have to pay any stamina, I can do my special attack, my strongest attack. Okay. That does four damage, and so it kills the Silver Knight. Whee! All right. Now, the Hollow... No, no, I've spent that ability. I can't do that again. The Hollow Soldier moves towards me, and it's going to attack me. I'm going to attempt to dodge. And I successfully dodge again. So, next up is the other hollow soldier. It is going to move one towards Matt. And it can't do anything else. No, sorry, that's... Yeah. And then last, we have the bowman. Now, the bowman moves one away from Matt. And then shoots at Matt. No! So, this is four damage. And it's a one dodge difficulty. Okay. So you can either try and block, or... Is it magical damage, or is it normal No, damage? it's normal damage. I'll try and... I'm going to get two dice. Two dice, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Three, so you take one damage. One damage. Okay, and that's that's Matt's turn done. So now it's my turn. No, no, it's... Oh, yeah, because I, yeah, I attacked. Because you did the attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first off, I get my stamina back. I am then going to... See, there's not a lot... I, I can't, don't actually want to move because I need to attack something. Now, I could actually run and go for the bowman, I think. Let's just check. No, so I can't get to the bowman because that needs to, that needs two. So I'm basically just going to stay where I am, and I'm going to attack this um, hollow soldier. Okey pokey. Three damage. It's dead. Nice and simple. Okay, now it's the enemy. So first up is the hollow soldier. It's going to move towards Matt. No. And it's going to attack Matt. So it's a one dodge difficulty or you can try and block it it's four damage yes block three so that means you take one damage now the great the silver knight bowman can't get any further away from me yeah so it's going to shoot at me this is a one dodge difficulty so i'm going to spend the stamina to dodge No. Fail to dodge again. Do you so, get any rerolls or anything? No, there's abilities that give you rerolls and so on here? later. Pun. What's this here? That oh, that is that does give you the ability to reroll once per life. That's a good th yeah. You've completely reminded me about that. That would have saved us one time before. Yeah. Oh well. That's <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so everyone remember, you get one free reroll right, okay. per life. Yeah. But um. I, it's fine because I think we're going to win this quite handily. So okay. I'm going to take the risk and take the five damage. Four, five. Right. And then that's my turn done. And so now it is Matt's turn. Okay. So I might as well. Uh... So you can move towards the bowman and still attack. Yeah. yeah okay. We'll do that one. So, whoop. And then. Yep, four damage. Absolutely handily beats that guy. Okay, so now it's the enemy's turn. There's only one left. It is going to... Can't get any further away from Matt. And so it's going to attack Matt. I need to get myself... 
So you can block. What are you giving yourself stamina for? Because I used it the attack. Oh, right. Okay, yes. Right. And so it's going to attack you. If this hits you, you're dead. Like if you're gonna, so you have to block, basically. Yeah. There you are. So you block two damage, so you take three damage. Okay. Right. And so now it is my turn. Now, I am going to have a wasted turn here, I'm afraid. So I get my stamina back. I'm going to move one. And I'm going to spend another stamina to run. And that's my turn done. Um, actually, I'm also going to heal using my Estus Flask. Because if I don't, I'm going to die. All right, okay. So. That gives me all my health back. So that's it gone now forever? That's it gone until, um, until we have another life, essentially. Okay. And so now the Silver Knight Great Bowman is going to attack me. I am going to attempt to dodge it. And I successfully dodge it. And so now it's your turn, Matt. Okay, so move me forward one. Yep, and you get our souls back. Yay, souls! And then we're going to attack him. And Oh, wait a minute. So you get two stamina back. Oh, yeah, I get two stamina back. And I'll use the three yeah. to roll two dice. That's two damage, and that is not enough to kill him. Oh, no. So I use my... Shiny. I would use your special ability to re-roll one of your dice. Okay. Because we need one of those to be... Actually, re-roll... Yeah, re-roll both. Way There we are. And he is now he dead. He is a deadite. There we are. Yo, what's going on? You have a bit on one of your cameras. Not sure. We're in the chat. Though. There's a bit of glare. Oh, we have... So how much did the table cost? Matt, so we got this for free, Geek Pride, through Geek and Son? Yeah, the uh, the table is uh, from the guys at Geek and Son. Uh, basically, the deal is uh, they give it to us uh, to play on, and we got it for freeze. So um, it's a it's a per, it's a loan basically. So we get to play on this awesome table for freeze. Uh, this table in general, though, is about um, one thousand five hundred quid. Six it's a six by four table. Uh, they have different, uh, they have different um, t sizes and things depending on depending on what you want. Uh, they've got super expensive ones. They've got more cheaper ones. But just type in Geek and Sun. So it's G E E K N and Sun uh, into Google, and they should be there. So you're gonna check it out. As for the glare, um, it's because we've got basically the spotlights and the uh, the black. Uh, the black board sort of shining yeah. off it. I'm trying to think what we can do best. Wise. Yeah, sadly it's not a lot there. It's quite. These are quite kind of matte, quite shiny um, already, and they're quite dark. So unfortunately, they are showing up the um, yeah. showing up the light. Showing up the light. Apologise for that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, not a great deal we can do about it. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so what I suggest we do now, Matt, is we go back and we do some leveling up. Well, at least I level up because I can do that. He just he just pre-ordered his. Uh, you've just got yourself a copy of Dark Souls, then. Excellent, yeah. It so I kickstarted this, so I've got um, some more goodies to come. But you, if you pre-order it, you'll get everything that's seen here. Um, it's a very nice set, very good miniatures, as we were talking about. Um, but yeah, it's really good, and this is a very good table to play it on. Um, understandably. Maybe a little out of some people's price range, but if you've got the money, then it's absolutely worth it as a gaming table. Well, let's just say um, I have a table in the house uh, that we bought when I, I got this house, and it was probably about um, 800, sort of 900 quid, uh, and it doesn't have half the functionality of this, this one. If you... Um, basically, you can see here, obviously, you get this sort of like padded layer, which I'm sort of... I'm not sure if you can see, I'm touching uh, on the thing. But this is a padded layer. Uh, you can check this out. Now, if you lift this out, it's got a Perspex layer underneath it. So you can play Dungeons and Dragons. So you can put like, um, you can draw things on it. You can put maps underneath it and things like that, which is pretty awesome. And on top of this, you get slats. So it can act as a normal table as well. 
So basically you'll have slats that goes on top of this, like this, and it'll cover it up and it'll be as if it was just a normal table. So it's it's pretty awesome. Great. So I recommend we go back and I do a bit of leveling up. Yes, sir. Because I can then actually... So actually, no, we get another two souls. So that puts us up to ten souls now. Where, where do I keep putting the uh, souls? Are they under here somewhere? Right, so I didn't use my flask. So we're... Nope, so you've still I got... Get all, I get all this back then and get all my life back then. You get all, oh yeah, We both get all our life back. Oh, here are the souls. Yep. All right, okay. And you've still got your re-roll and you've got your... Actually, no, you don't have your re-roll. I have my re-roll. And you've got your flask. Okay. And what's this here? What's this? That's your special ability that heals stamina back. Alright, okay, okay. So, but you can only do that in your turn. Right. So, what happens now is we're going to go back. Now, we don't have to um, reset. Now, there's two things we can do here without resetting the game. We can level up, which I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and we can buy more treasure, which I think we should probably do for Matt, because um, he currently doesn't have anything that he can even... Of aim towards at the moment. Um, so how do I get this other card, this super awesome one here? So you've got to level up your dexterity until it meets the requirements, and your intelligence until it meets the requirements. Now, dex and um, intelligence. Oh, I can't get this one then at all. Yeah, that's very. You can't get it at all. Thirty-five. Yeah, I'm a yeah. thirty-four. So that's second. that's not for you then. That's uh, kind of for me basically. Okay. Yeah. But I, I don't, I'm not really going to level that up either because that's quite some way. But we should really get you something that you can use. So I'm going to use um, it's four of our souls to get my dex and my strength up, which will let me use the composite bow that we drew earlier. So there's my strength and my dex up. And I can now switch at the start of my turn between my bow and my S-Tox. So you can switch at the start of your turn between your shield and your healing thing as well. Um, and so at the start of my turn, I can either attack from range or I can um, use my S-Doc. Okay, so I don't, I don't level up then? Um, well, you can, but there's nothing that you can immediately wield yet. So you, ah, okay. you, if you okay. want, we can spend four souls and level you up as no, well. No, 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 it's fine. That's cool. Yep. Um, but there's, there's nothing you can immediately use. So... Um, right, so what we can do though is we can buy some more treasure with our spare souls, and then we can see if you can, if you want to level up, using some of that treasure. Okay. So if let's let's buy two, lots of treasure, that puts us down to four, and so then you draw two cards and okay. see if there's one that you can use. So uh, I've got a uh, spotted spotted whip. Oh. Um, that might actually be good for me. Pounds sadly. thirty. Yeah, so the stagger thirty, twenty three for intelligence, so it'll be like low, higher level. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you minus one, and then a green thing, whatever that does. I think we've not been, yeah, I've not been doing my minus ones, but that's fine. Um, we'll do that properly from now on. Yeah. So, oh, it's a, and it does poison damage, and what poison damage does? So there's different kinds of damage that added in, just like in the Dark Souls game itself. Poison damage means that at the end of every turn, they take one damage. So over, over time, that will do a lot of damage. So that's 30 dex and 23 intelligence. So um, at some point, I could use that. Sadly, we're getting a lot of stuff I can use. But yeah, this one I think is the same. Uh, rotten Guru Dagger. Did we... Sh uh, we might not have... Sh like, put that back in and we'll shuffle it properly. Because I think... No, I think you're probably going to get more ones that are for me. So give it a good old shuffle. Put it back in and give it a proper shuffle. I'll just leave it out. It doesn't really matter. In fairness. So yeah, we have actually drawn only weapons that I can use. Um, so that's why I think we maybe didn't do the best shuffles. Okay. There we are. Short sword. Um, I need 23. 15 strength. Which will be my next... No, it won't be my next level. Oh yeah, it will be my next level. And 23 dexterity. That's a bit away for you. That's two levels away. Yep. So I just guess at the weight. Yep. Okay. So that will cost you. That will cost us um, two, four. That would be eight souls to get you to be able to use that. Yeah. I think now again, one of the things I would say is that we should probably have some ability to sell this stuff back to get more souls, in my yeah. opinion. But um, obviously, not a lot we can do there. So I now have a bow, at least. So I can start doing range damage at the beginning of each turn. Okay. Cool. So that's an improvement we've got there. 
So when will the add-ons be released? So I think there are already some add-ons you can now buy um, because there were some which were available exclusively to retailers. So there, I think like the last giant, things like that, which are already available for about 35 pounds. If you've done the Kickstarter, then you get all of the Kickstarter add-ons around October, November time. There you go, you heard it here first. So let's turn over and see what we have for this encounter. Right, so for this one, this one looks like it's a much kinder encounter. Um, first of all, it has got a treasure chest. Way, we like treasure chests. quite nice for us. And the enemies are a crossbow and a um, and a normal one on that one. And we have a crossbow hollow, no, a, a normal hollow. And for the first time, we meet our large hollow soldier, who is down here. Now, the large hollow soldier doesn't actually have an attack. What it does is in one move, it jumps at the nearest person and does them five damage and knocks them away. So that can only get one square at a time closer to us, but it will always go for the nearest and only does damage at the same time as it moves. So nice, relatively easy to fight from range. Good thing that I am now a ranged character. However, one thing that really helps is that this now has five health. So this is not something to be trifled with. As you can see there, five health. Something we're gonna to have to be very careful about. So it's a bit of a tank. It says, uh, Excessive Shark says, I tried doing the Kickstarter thing, but didn't know exactly to pay for it. Um, excessive Shark. Um, there was definitely a Kickstarter, but they, you had to do it during a certain period of time. That was more than a year ago. You can't actually back it now. Um, I'm afraid you can't get any of the extras that with a Kickstarter. I'm is... not sure if that has anything to do with it. I don't think so. No, there's think... definitely a USA release. Yeah, it's all, it, was all, it was all the same thing. I think, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to sort of patronise you or anything. I'm not sure if you know how to use Kickstarter or... That it should uh, literally just, be a case of um, is it connected to PayPal or is it yeah, connected to your Amazon? Yeah, it's connected to PayPal. But I, I think what's probably happened is you're looking at it after the Kickstarter closed, and you could they only had a very limited period for to back it. You yeah. now can't back it. Was the add oh so was the add on? The add ons the are only for the Kickstarter. Ah right, okay. There you Everyone go. else has to pay the extra for them. Okay, so um, who went last out of me and you in that last encounter? That would have... I went first. You went first. Right, so... Well, let's just toss a coin. Um, that'll be you then. So, you go then, Matt. Actually, let... You actually, let's just... make it easier. I'll go first, because yeah. that'll, that'll make the game a bit easier for us. So, because we're fighting at range, I'm going to use my bow, clearly. And I'm not going to move because we want to stay away from... Ah, yeah, you've pre-ordered yours through Amazon. Yeah, right, yeah, because... Yeah, so the Kickstarter will have just closed. Sadly, it's one of those things about Kickstarter that's great, but also terrible, because if you don't find it during the narrow window that's available, then you can't actually um, get all of the bonuses on top of it. But the Kickstarter was £80, which would be about $120 or so. The actual base game, I think, is much less than the 80 I hope anyway. Um, okay, so I am not going to move. I am going to do my... I'm just going to shoot the crossbow um, hollow because that's most likely to do damage to us at range. I'm just going to do a normal attack on it. That is two, but I do minus one. Um, and what does that... There's a special thing on here. What does that special thing do? I'm just going to check what the special thing does. Yeah, I literally found out about this game last week from our Boggy Marathon stream. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. There's loads of games out there. And I'm like, where, where did this come from? I want that game. There's a... Uh, there, what else has come out? It's in, um, Fallout 4 board games coming out very soon oh is it i don't think it's going to be a kickstarter but it's going to be uh it's right. going to be out, out and about very soon that looks pretty interesting and of course uh, right. warhammer 40,000 is getting its eighth edition very soon i'm going to use my re-roll and i'm going to re-roll because we need to kill that 
Hollow Soul. Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, no, Sean. Oh, no. And so oh, that's a no. waste of a turn, sadly. I probably should have spent stamina, but there we are. There you go. Bad decision. Okay, and now the enemies are going to go. So, the large hollow soldier goes first, and it jumps nearer to us. Then the hollow soldiers go next, and they move towards us. And finally, the crossbow hollow goes away, and it shoots at me. I'm going to dodge it. And I fail to dodge. <laughs> oh, taking no. Taking... Three damage. One, two, three. Okay, right, and then that's my turn done. Now it's Matt. Okay, um, I guess I should move over here and then try and kill this guy. Yep, sounds reasonable. Okay, so let's do that. Um, I will use... Uh, it's three stamina then. Use three stamina. Two dice. Isn't How about you? Goodbye. Excellent. No, it's one dice plus one. Yeah, three stamina. Is that what that does? Yeah, so it's one dice plus... So you're only supposed to roll one. Ah, and then okay. Ah, right, okay. It's fine. We'll count that as a two... As a, either one of those dice would have been a kill. Yeah, so okay. it's fine. Okay. So it's dead. Okay, right, and so now it's the enemy's turn. So this guy is going to jump in there. Then the hollow soldier will join him. Hollow soldier. And then the crossbow hollow is going to shoot you, Matt. So what? Say what? It's magic damage. No. So you either try and dodge, That's and you've got to get one success. So you spend a stamina to dodge. Then I will dodge. No, and you I fail won't. to dodge. You take three damage. So, I'm going to get my stamina Ooh. back. And then I'm going to step one this way. I'm going to attempt to shoot that goddamn crossbow hollow. And I'm going to use three stamina to do it. Oh, we've got a thing up here. I don't think. It's hard to see board on the second camera to the to lighty. Yeah, apologise about this. We we are having difficulty with the light levels. Um, it's just because the mats are incredibly shiny. Um, it's not a lot we can do. I apologise about that. Yep, unfortunately. So. Yeah. And maybe is it this one that's? No, that one's fine. It's this one that's struggling. I'm afraid. Um. Move it a little bit further away. That's about the best we can do. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, yeah, apologies, but there's not a lot more we can do. Very sorry about that. Um, okay, so I've spent three stamina, so I'm going to do three attack die, minus one, aiming to get two. Oh my God! <laughs> What's wrong with you today, Sean? I cannot believe that. That is a one in six, one in 36, one in a hundred and... Eight, like a hundred and forty chance of that happening. Oh, Sean! Right, and then that's my turn done. So, so those now guys, those buggers are going to come over to me now. They're going to come over to you. So, this guy moves first, awesome. hits you. Yep. Right, it does five damage. So, you either try and block that, and then you get moved, or you try and dodge it. I'm not going to be able to dodge it. I'm, I think I'll probably try and block it, shouldn't I? Okay, so you roll two, dam two die. <laughs> One. Four damage. You take four dead. damage and we're dead. No! We've died three times on this already. Well, I guess that's Dark Souls for you. Right, so we go back to the start. We have to do this encounter first again. What? Yep. Why is that? Because everything resets when you die. We do get our Estus back, get our special ability back, and we get our luck roll back. Oh no. <laughs> you roll very unluckily. Yep. I know, we've rolled very, very badly there. Um, right, and so 
we start again. So let's move back to here. We turn back over and we've got our two swordsmen here. Don't you have to turn the dial to one now? You're yes. right, we do. We do indeed. <laughs> Down to one. Cheers, excessive shark, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> we've got and one life left. Our bowman comes back. And our hollow soldier. We're going to need to nick one from over there. Actually, no, we don't, because that goes there. Oh, Sean. We are... We've still got the big boss to fight and as that well. That goes there. Yes. We are in significant danger. Yes, we are. Okay, so... You died, so I go first. <laughs> I can't actually get out of range because of the... Um, gravestone normally i try and get out of range but i can't so i'm going to move over here and i am going to shoot at what do we want to shoot at the range guy maybe range guy there's two of them there's two of them um yeah, we're in a, we are in some serious trouble uh, here. White Bishop on the YouTube is asking, is the game worth it? Well, we're having a lot of trouble winning. Um, we aren't actually going to get to the boss on this, I don't think. I think we'll just, uh, when we die for the final time, we'll just fire ourselves on the boss and see what happens. Just to give it a go, I yeah, think yeah. we will jump onto the boss anyway. <laughs> um, it's actually, you know, the miniatures are great. The quality of the board is great. I... I think playing it that some of the difficulty settings are a little bit high. Um, I, th I think maybe the game has been built for an, a different or optimal number of players and we're having some real difficulties here. I think one of the things I'd probably do is uh, homebrew it or change one of the rules so that the enemies only get one turn per round if there's only like one or two of you. But yeah, if, like, no, if there's one of you, rule it, house rule it yeah, one. I think we're going to have to house rule it because I would say there's some significant difficulty problems here. I think what we're probably meant to do um, is we've always spent a, a while there starting up. What I think we're meant to do is spend quite a while grinding over the first two simple rooms. So as you can see, pointing to here, these two simple rooms, I think we've got those down pat. We can probably beat those relatively simply. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to beat those a good few times, get up a bank of souls, level up, start using some things that we've drawn, maybe buy new things that we've drawn, and then go on to the next stage. I have to admit that if I had to do that, I, I'd be slightly annoyed. I don't, yeah. I don't like grinding. Well, I, being an ex-World of Warcraft addict and the grind being something that terminally sort of uh, made me feel sick I, I don't like the grind yeah so I think um, I also think maybe we've messed up on the treasure decks a couple of the items that we've drawn we couldn't pl like play until end game yeah, okay. so what one of the things that might also look to do is either check that we've played the play treasure deck properly or um, we might need to house rule something so you actually draw items that you can wield relatively simply this way, we can push this down the whole deck towards me, sir, if we can, so there's not so much glare on that last tile. So if we do this... Yeah, there's not so much glare now. So yeah, I'd say... Um, the, I'd say the game as written is very very difficult and probably i could see now having played it why a lot of reviewers had some negative feedback about it it's a very very difficult like we've died t what three times now yeah um and we're not even at the boss but that being said like, we haven't done the grind and stuff uh, by but, the way, if we, we were to go back into that room, would it be the same card over and over again? Or is it a different Yeah, it's the card same card. card. It's the same card. Same card over and over again. So basically, it is a case of grinding. Get your guy up again and then move on. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, and I think so that's... So if, if, basically, if grinding isn't an issue for you, then that's fine. You know, you know, as a game, it's quite... I love 
this whole stamina health yes. thing. Um, for all of you who don't know, uh, you've basically got... We've got a health bar, but it incorporates stamina and health. And um, every time you take an action, it costs you a certain amount of stamina. And if you take damage, so if you... It, it goes down from there. Actually, I wonder if I can do this and show you. Right, so basically, each time you do an action... Every time you do an action, you, you, you cost your stamina. So that goes like this. But every time you take damage, it comes down like this. And if the two meet in the middle, you're dead. And I love that. I think that's a really good mechanic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think, yeah, the game as written is just, it's just, it's almost too hard. Um, or I think you'd need to play certain characters. So Matt's got, like the ability with his shields and so on to actually block damage so matt can regularly mitigate damage the assassin character is all or nothing with dodge and so there's some randomness that goes along with that that i don't think makes it quite as much fun to play yeah i think I'm, I'm quite enjoying it um it is quite hard but then dark yeah. souls is quite hard so. dark souls is very hard i just i just think there's some things we could do here to um to address that I'd say some of the stamina costs maybe a little high, but we can run. Th obviously, we'll run through this. We're we're go we're going to die. We're not going to make it through to the next thing because I. Um, it's now the enemy's turn. <laughs> and they're all going to come for me. Yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. So, um, Silver Knight Swordsman is going to move two towards the nearest person. Okay. And so that's you, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're now both going to attack you. Of course. So, and Well, in fairness, the first one that attacks you is going to knock you out of the thing, so you won't get hit by both. So, um, five damage, Matt. Do you want to try and dodge or block? I'm going to try and block. Okay, so roll your two die. Four! So that means you only take one yeah, damage. one damage. And you get knocked out, so the other one can't hit you. What happens now is that next up we have the Hollow Soldier, which is going to move one towards us. Can't do anything more. Then the Silver Knight Great Bowman is going to shoot at me and move one away. I am going to attempt to dodge it, so I spend one stamina for the dodge. And I dodge it. And you dodge it. Thankfully. Um, finally... Then the crossbow hollow is going to move one away and it's going to shoot at me. I'm going to spend another stamina and attempt to dodge it. Oh. And I fail. I take three damage. The dice gods have forsaken you. And again, one of the things here is that because I start off with a shield that only gives me dodge dice, um, I've not got that option of kind of yeah, mitigating loss. Yeah, and, mitigating and so and... like that, t those two blanks. That's like a one in four chance. Thanks, lads. Did you just get the base game, or did you uh, get any expansions? That is White Bishop Twelve on YouTube. So the expansions are coming in October, November. Um, there, is, there are a couple that you can buy um, from retailers at the moment. Retailers who kickstarted it will get access to some exclusive bosses. But it don't change the core gameplay. It's just different bosses at the end that you fight. We're not even going to get to show you a boss. Well, um, we, we will. We'll just we'll, we'll come. We, we will. We'll attempt the mini boss. Yeah. But we're not going to get to show a real boss. Oh, okay. A real boss is it, you've got to fight even more and have even better equipment for. Oh, right, okay. So we can show them a mini boss, but we're not going to get to show them a boss. All oh, right, I see. Because it's see. just just too difficult. We're just so we failed so badly. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> okay, and so now it's... Well, let, show them show them the thing that you comes... The first thing when you open up the box... Yes, the first thing so that you, comes with it when, when you, you open, open up the box, box is... Oh, crap, where is it? Somewhere yeah. around here. Um, where did you put it? Where yeah, where have here? I put it? Is it here? I don't know where it's gone. Yeah, the first thing where you the see rule? is... Got the rule book? I've got the rule book. The first thing that you see is a you died... It's a picture. Is it, is it underneath it that you box? You died... I don't know where the picture is. Um, in fairness, I don't need it again. But oh, here it is. It's in the box. Yeah. So yes, the very first thing that you see when you open the box is 
you died. <laughs> you died. That's what's going to happen to us very soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's crack on then. So that was my turn. Matt, that's your turn. Uh, let me... Uh, I had to stop your TV from going idle. Let me volume up, volume down. No, there we go. Yeah, it is pretty cool as the you died thing, isn't it? Yeah, so I see excessive shark on Twitch is enjoying our our uh, our misfortune. Failure, yes. <laughs> right, Matt, your turn. Right, okay. Um I might as well go for one of those knights before they come actually no, wait a minute. I'll move over there and I'll take that guy there then. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I've got to use... Oh, it's one dice, and I get plus one. So it is... Oh, no. Use your stamina? Yeah. Okay. Three stamina. Okay. Two. One, two damage, which kills him. Yeah! There we are. He's dead. Now it's all of the enemy's turn. Yeah. So, first up, the Silver Knight Swordsman are going to move into my block. First one is going to attack me. If it hits me, I've dead and we've lost the game. <laughs> I would like to point out that Sean has been our demise twice. Yep. So I'm going to try and dodge. Yes. I successfully dodge. I'm going to use my special ability, which lets me do a free attack whenever I dodge. Yes. One, two, three, four, minus one is enough to kill. This is three, so one of these guys is now dead. Hooray. Huzzah. Now the other one is going to attack me. I will again spend one stamina to dodge. Again, if this hits me, we're dead. It, I dodge. Next up is the... Um, the Bowman? No, it's a, yeah, this bowman. Yep. So this bowman's going to attack Matt. Ah, uh, no! He's going to do four damage to you, Matt. Uh, I'm going to try and... Uh... Block it. Oh, three damage. Three damage. Okay, so I basically got now it's... three damage or three Now it's the other hollow. I'm dead. The crossbow hollow moves away. Um, I guess that would be here. And it's going to attack me. Now, I have to dodge this. Otherwise, we've lost. So I will roll my dodge. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. Yes. I dodge again. And so, that's their turn. Now, it's my turn. All right. I gain two stamina back. Yep. And I think I'm going to have to use my Estus. Otherwise, we're, we're dead. So, I'm going to use my Estus. And then I'm going to spend three stamina to do a solid attack on the, um, on the Silver Knight with my Estoc. I see the boards are so dark. You, they're, they're quite dark in person as well. So, you can't really, from that big screen, you can't really see... Um, can't really see them that well. One, two, three, um, four, five. That's enough to kill the oh, the knight. Right. So there go now. Now it's there go. So the swordsman is going to shoot. So they get a lot of goes. They do get a lot of goes, and that's what I'm saying. This is one of the criticisms I have that the game is a little too hard. Yeah. That every single time we go, they go. All right. Okay. And so, because they get a lot of goes, the sheer damage that they're outputting is pretty high. I suppose, in the end, the whole... Dark Souls is meant to be hard. And yeah. if they made it too easy, then it would be like, you know, the whole you died thing on the box would just be like, oh, no, I didn't, because I it's ran true. through this and fucked them up. That is true. So I'm going to have to spend a stamina to dodge. And I successfully dodge. Now, the other crossbowman... It's going to shoot at me as well, so I'm going to spend another stamina to dodge, and I successfully dodge. That then puts me up to seven stamina. That's uh, how much I've had to use for this. So you've basically got three left. Basically got three health. Three health left. No, two health even. Two no, health I've used left. eight stamina. All right. 
Right, now it's your turn. Okay, uh, I can't do anything really, can I? Can I move? So you get two stamina back. Yeah, two stamina back. You can spend an additional stamina to run one square, which would put you in near enough to attack. Yeah, I'll do that then. So I'll attack the uh, uh, the boat. Probably best to attack that guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, we'll do that then. And then I'll spend... Don't spend stamina. Okay, not spend stamina. You uh, might want to use your Estus and heal okay, as well. I'll use my Estus and heal then. So I'll heal, then I'll use my stamina to do attack plus one. Yep. And that's another thing. I do think the difficult that yeah, some of the difficulty is given by like your stamina cost and so on. The fact that it's three stamina to use your stronger attacks. Two. Two. That's enough to kill this crossbowman. Goodbye, crossbowman. Goodbye, crossbowman. Right, and so now there's only one enemy left. Um, it is going to attack Matt. <laughs> of course he is. Of course he is. So, do you want to block or dodge? Uh. I'm going to try and dodge this time. You're trying to dodge, okay, so that costs one stamina. If it hits oh, you, you're you know dead. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm going, to, I'm going to block. Okay, right. They ask you block three, so you take one damage. Okay, now it's my turn. I'm going to stay where I am, and I'm going to shoot at the bugger. Um, I get two stamina back. I'm not going to spend any stamina. Actually, no. Yeah. No, I can't. If I spend stamina to attack with this... I can't dodge without dying. Right. So, I'm just going to have to do a normal attack. I need to get a three. I need to get two twos, essentially, here, in order to kill this guy. And I don't. And we're dead. So now it's my turn. Now it's the enemy's turn to attack me. It attacks me. I spend stamina to dodge. <laughs> get the dodge, Sean. Get the dodge. Ooh. And I dodge. Ooh. Right, so now it's your turn, Matt. Right, so let's uh, move. Let's do the one stamina thing and move. So you forward. get two stamina back. Yeah. Start the turn. Yeah. And then we'll cast the stamina to move me forward an extra thing. Yep. To attack him. Yep. And then we'll use uh, three stamina. Yes, yeah, excessive shark. I do still have a reroll left. Um. I was just going to use that in case I failed a dodge, because okay. they would have died. Okay, so it's plus one, two. Two, that's not enough to kill it. Uh, should I re-roll it? No, you'd have to get a two, basically. Oh, okay. I mean, you can use your re-roll, it's up to you. Yeah, go on. We're, we're screwed, essentially. Yeah, we might as well just re-roll yeah. it, just for the... For go shits, on, then. For shits and giggles. For shizzles and giggles. No. Right, fail. Right, so now it's going to shoot at... Actually, it's going to step away from you, Matt. And it's going to shoot at you. Um, are you going to dodge or block? Uh, how much damage does it do? It does four damage. I will be dead then. So let's try. And... Four damage. Four damage. There you <laughs> are. Excellent. And so Negated. you block. You block entirely. Yeah. I'm like a pshka. Yeah. Well done. So now it's my turn. I'm going to. Uh, I get two stamina back. I'm going to again shoot. Basically, I'm, we're just relying on getting twos here because of the minus one that I've got and the amount of health this guy has. Three. It's a fail again. Reroll it. I'll reroll. Re it. Right, it's only one in three chance. Oh. Right. Okay, and so now it's its turn. <laughs> it's going to attack me. I'm going to try and dodge it. And I do dodge it. Matt's turn. Right. Move me in. Board one. Uh, we're going to have to do... You get two stamina back, remember? Oh, yeah. So that will be there. So I'm about to move back to there. So one dice plus one. That's two. Not enough to kill it. Feck a deck. Yep. And so now it's its turn. It's going to move away from you. Yeah. It's going to shoot you. Yeah. And I am going to die. Yeah, I've got. Two you've got to left. take. Yeah, you've got to take less than two damage. So you can either try and dodge, or you should dodge all of it, or you can try and block and see if you can get three or higher. No. No. Cock dice. Cock dice. Cock okay. dice. Nope. <laughs> Matt dies. Matt dies. So, two so for two. that's game over. Yeah. We're done. Um, we have lost quite spectacularly there, sadly. 
Uh, uh, excessive Shark says, some reason I thought you got another attack you just successfully dodged. That is a one-off ability I have, which I've already used earlier in the fight. Right. So I don't get to do that again, sadly. That's then our last chance. So we've died. We have died. Four times. Four times. The four. game is over. We have lost. All right. So uh... what we'll do is we'll show you what a boss fight would look like. Um, and I think we'll give ourselves some slightly better equipment <laughs> yeah. so that this can work. Yes, okay. um, just to show you kind do of a that. different set of what can happen. So let's have a look. Sean's just checking the deck before we uh, fight. Right, this so mofo right here. See, I'm 34. This is just a mini boss. Yes. So the mini, the main bosses, the big bosses, are they just these dudes, but with harder stats? No, the, the, that is the no. The main boss is different guy. Okay. So there is only there's four mini bosses and two bosses. Oh, okay. Who are the bosses? So the bosses are the dancer of the boreal valley and um, Ornstein and Smell. Uh, oh, well, somebody just joined and then left, so we will not explain this. Again, uh, we're playing on a Geek and Son table. Um, they uh, were meant to be here today, but unfortunately, they had um, uh, Karen uh, had some um, some family issues and couldn't make it. So we're carrying on the show without him. Um, this table, obviously, check out the website. Um, it's available for anybody who is. Um, Across, across the world basically they do america they also do the uk um will you guys or sorry uh excessive shark says will you guys be streaming this often i follow to hopefully watch you guys play this a lot um yeah we'll be playing it again yeah um, definitely we're, play we're going to be trying to play a bit more regularly um it won't be every week well, well we're, i'm going to try we play we did an rpg last week um we've got an rpg at the end of the month uh the end Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah, we'll hopefully try and play this a few more times. Um, if you're online tomorrow, um, Sunday that is, um, probably from about one ish uh, GMT, um, we're going to be playing some other games as well. So we've got two other chaps I know coming round to play on the table and have a few more games. So yeah, keep an eye out. Uh, if you want to know what's going on with this uh, gratuitous plug, uh, check out the Facebook page and or the Twitters because we put a lot of updates on there on what we're doing. So, right, here we are. I'm just trying to find some good stuff. Oh, I want some good stuff. They are some new armor for you. Ooh, what does my new armor do? Black armor. What is it? Oh, it gives me a blue dice. Yeah, so, so when you roll, you get the blue dice instead. Right, so here's, here's a new shield for you. I like new shields. I also get a blue dice. And just try to find a last. Oh, what about the halberd? What's this halberd? Yeah, that's um, a new weapon I'm giving you as well. Ah, I get a halberd. So you can't do that when you're in the same square as someone else, but you can um, you can attack people better at range. Kill. Right, and I'm going to give myself a ring, which at the end of every turn, I get one health back. Uh, excessive Shark, if you can afford them, go for it. Um, like I said, there's different ones. You can also get little coffee table ones, smaller ones. Uh, I think they're also looking into um, doing some more some more smaller ones too um they're also from what i've been told from our last podcast with uh johnny who's one of the guys from geek and son they're actually looking to build in um like touch screen stuff into it which would be kind of awesome think imagine this but a touch screen so you can play stuff and that'll be that'll be kind of awesome but i'm going to assume that's going to be super expensive Okay, right, so what we'll do now is we'll show you what a boss looks like. So let's put away some of these guys and we'll show you how a boss encounter works. Just give you a little flavour of the difference. Um, boss fight! 
<laughs> Just putting everything away because I'm a little anal retentive. Right, there we are. Okay, and now we need to dig out the boss tokens for this guy. So. So there is this is top. Now where's his boss? Oh. Right, and let's then put that together and we'll be able to show off what it does. extra strat goals for the Kickstarter campaign will release in October, am I right? Also, the majority of those goals are extra characters. That's from White Bishop 12 on YouTube. So you're right about the date. It's October, though, given the fact that the main one was delayed from March to May, we're probably going to see it more like November. The majority, so those extras, they include a, quite a lot of different things. So they include a uh, some new characters, that you can play as. They include some um, new enemies, new bosses, and um, invaders, and things like that. So it does really expand out the game and gives you a lot more to play through. Um, a lot very different in terms of what's available to you and how much of the game is actually there from the start. So we now have, now what we have for each of the bosses, which we'll show you here. So we're currently, which camera are we on, Matt? This, uh, one. this one. Yeah. So each of the bosses has their own health dial like this. So you'll see their, their own unique dial. So this one has 26 health. So it's got a good amount of health, sadly. Um, let's move ourselves in here. Now, the way bosses work is they have a um, set of cards that determine their behavior. So here is the actual card for the Outrider Knight himself. So you can see that he has a behavior of four cards. He absorbs two physical damage and three magical damage. He has a, um, when he gets to half health, the heat up happens. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I'm just trying to find the heat up cards. There they are. And then, um, yeah, and he does not get staggered. He does not um, get frostbitten. So they are pretty uh, good models. White Bishop Twelve. Um, there, are, you should see some of the other bosses as well. You know, even if you know you're not too keen on the game, the models are pretty bitching. So, what we do now is. Me and Matt will start here, and now we've had different characters leveled up a bit. The boss now gets four cards. Say we've drawn here four cards, which display, which then determine its activities. It will do the same things every four rounds, essentially. So it starts facing us like that, and then we draw the first card. Now I. Now, do you want to go first, Matt, or shall I? You go first, then. I go first. Right. Okay. So, I am going... Actually, the, let's probably turn that back. Sorry, because we shouldn't see that, because we don't know that yet. So, I am going to... Now, because we're fighting a boss, don't really want to risk too much. But I have to um, share a square with him in order to attack him. So I'm going to move here. Now I have to be in front of him because I've approached him from the front. You can move round for additional stamina. Okay. But I'm going to stay. Actually, I'm going to spend the additional stamina and get round his back. Or her back. Doesn't really matter. So, uh, so I'm now to the side rather than directly in front of it. 
I'm going to roll a dice. So it's one of these plus one. Now the um, knight has two absorption, so I need to get a two in order to do any damage to him. No. I failed. I do no damage. Now it's its turn. We turn over. And so now the way the bosses work, the bosses have slightly different behavior is the way that we would describe it. So. Sorry, a random question. Uh, you, you said you can do a campaign on this, can you? You can do a campaign, yes. So you can set it up like D&D, basically. Um, and, yeah, the same way that, like, 4th edition worked, that you would essentially have the same characters, persistent characters throughout. So when you leveled up and so on, you would um, keep your abilities, you'd keep the new armor that you didn't gain, things like that. Okay. Okay, and so now the boss... As you can see here, it will attack there, doing five damage. What the hell? <laughs> and it do, it attacks the front, the left, and the right. Yep. That's weird. My, my, my door just suddenly starts... Oh. Yeah, Matt's, Matt has a door that talks to him because he's pretty lonely, unfortunately. And... Yeah, the door just started talking to him. <laughs> right, there we are. So, this boss, as we can see here, it attacks in front of it, behind it, and to its left. If you're on its right, you don't get hit. Now, you'll notice, I am quite fortunately on its right, out of pure luck. So, I don't take any damage. Then what it does is it moves one square away from us. See there? Yeah. Moves one square away. And then that goes to the bottom of the pile. So we know that second, third, fourth, the next time that, so on my, on my third turn, that's gonna happen again. So we know to get to its right on its f like fourth go, okay. essentially. So now it's Matt's turn. Right. So I guess I'll move forward one. Yep. And have it with my halberd. Okay. So your halberd does a blue dice. We so have... I will use four stamina, but I get two blue dice and one. I get two blue dice and I guess I got a plus one. Yeah. So. There you are. What's that mean? I, uh, oh, that, that's, that's yeah, that's four damage. So it does four damage. It does four damage. Yes. Yeah. So you've done four damage to it. Now it ha absorbs two of those damage. Actually, I'll leave those out because you're gonna need those. It absorbs two of those damage, and so it has taken two damage, taking it down to twenty-four. <laughs> twenty-four. Now it's its next turn. It moves forward. And does a chilling thrust. So it moves forward to, so towards us, actually, and then tramples through us. So we have to either dodge or um, roll. <laughs> Essentially, dodge or block. I'm going to try and dodge that because otherwise we take. I'm going to be rolling my two blue dice then. And two get... damage. How many damage does it take, give us? Actually, yeah, we get knocked back. Oh, yeah, and the, if we get hit, but it, yeah. So you've got, no, sorry. So we've got to dodge that, otherwise you get knocked back. Okay. So I get three dodge dice, if I can have that. So I get three dodge dice. I have dodged it. Oh, no, no, I haven't. I failed to dodge that. So I get knocked back. So I'm in front of it. I can't do that either. I can only dodge one. So, oh, so you were also then knocked. So it's now moved us both. So we're both in front of it because no matter where we were. So if we'd been around its side or its back, it would have forced us in front of it there. It's now going to do a chilling thrust. The chilling thrust is four damage. It attacks Matt. Four damage. I'm going to try and do four damage. 
block it. Now it's magic damage, so you don't have a um, your shield doesn't block magic damage. So ah, right, okay. So it... so you roll one blue dice. One. So you take three damage, and you now get a frostbite token. No. Frostbite. We have got that around here. Ah, oh, here we are. Frostbite. I, these little token things, these little qu square cubes, I don't know why they didn't just have little sort of like slidey differs. I guess it's just because um, they get taken in and out, I suppose. So that's try and find. So one thing I would have liked was an appendix for the rule book, personally, because it would have made some of this stuff a lot easier. Right. So. So what happens now is if you walk, run or dodge, it costs you an additional stamina. Right. And I, can I get rid of this at all? Yeah, um, you get that. You get rid of that at the end of your turn. Okay. Right. And so we know now that on your, like, uh, next go, it's going to move towards us too, and it's going to attack. But if you're behind it, you're safe. So now it's my turn. Get back my two stamina, which I spent dodging. I would get one health back if I had any damage. I am going to use one to get behind it. And then I'm going to roll my blue two blue damage. So I'm going to spend three stamina to roll two blue damage dice and hopefully do some mother fudging damage. Mother fudging damage! Three. And it absorbs two. It absorbs uh, two, so I do one damage to it. Better than a kick in the groin. So it's now down to 23. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Now it is its turn. Turn over. So it moves one to its left and turns face me. And then attacks its front and no it attacks so i'm trying to read that now it attacks its no it attacks to its left and behind it so to its left and behind it is nothing so it misses entirely way Actually, no. Um, oh, Sean, what? No, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, so it misses us entirely. Matt, your turn. All right. Um, two stamina back. Two stamina back. Should I use my thingy? Yes, to flask. Um, you can do if you want. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll be it. I'll, I'll, I'll be it. No, because I'll, I'll use three and that'll move me up. Yeah, I'll use my to flask. Okay, so that's your rest is fast gone. Uh, I'll do that. Remember, it costs you an additional stamina. All right, to use to do anything. Oh no, it's if you want. Oh, if you don't want to move, it doesn't. Well, so just just, just going to stay where you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yep. So I get two. Two blue. Yep. Yeah. Those plus one. That's three, four minus it's two, so that means it takes two damage. Taking it down to 21. Now it is next turn. Backhand slash. So, so are they, these weapons we've got, uh, what sort of level are they? I picked ones that are appropriate level for this fight. Right, okay. So it's still a bit of a grind against the... the yeah, the bosses are meant to be quite a long fight, just right, like okay. real Dark Souls bosses. They're not meant to be something that you just beat immediately. Right, okay. They're cool. designed to be like a prolonged tactical fight. Right, okay, cool. Okay, so what this one is going to do is it's going to move one towards you as the nearest person. And then it is going to do its um, attack. Hang on, let's see what that... I don't know what that one means. There's one thing there that I don't know what it means. Oh, so it means it does it again next. If we, 
Oh, okay, right, so it actually does this twice, so we know it does this in the next round as well. Um, okay, that's going to be interesting for us. So it now does damage to its left and its right, that is both of us. Yeah. It's four damage, so I'm going to dodge. It is physical damage, so you can use both your blue dice to try and block okay. it. Five, you block it fully. I majestically fail to dodge. <laughs> I cannot believe that is the second time that has happened. Reroll, reroll. Yeah, I will spend my reroll to do anything other than that. There we are, full dodge. So I dodge, take no damage. Um, I can't attack back though, because I'm not. I have to be in the same um, thing as it, and it's showing on with you. Right, okay. Okay, right. Now it's my turn. So I take back two stamina. So this is the thing, is that we can't keep using stamina up. But it's going to do the same thing again. So I know I can be 100% safe if I get behind it. Right, okay. So I'm going to spend a stamina to run. And I'm going to run behind it. I'm then going to attack. You, actually, no, I will use three stamina because I know I'm going to be safe. So I'm going to go all out. I'm going to use my two blue die to try and do some proper damage here. Four. That's four minus two, two. So it's now down to 19. So we're whittling it down. Now it's going to do the same thing. So unfortunately, Matt, it's going to run one. Now Hit you me. need to eat, um, roll a dodge. A dodge, if you can get two dodge. I can't. You can't, so it pushes you, unfortunately, over there. And now you need to... Um, oh, you've got rid of your frostbite token because you has gone. Okay, and so now you need... It does four damage. And so... Oh, is it... What's sort of damage? Normal then? damage again. So yeah. you block three, so you take one damage and you're frostbitten. No! Okay. And now it's your turn, Matt. Okay, so I need to... You get two stamina back. Two stamina back. Okay. And it costs me an extra stamina. To move. Yes, yeah, so that costs you one stamina. Yeah. And then I'm going to clobber him. With... So that keeps me one, two, three, four. So that's there. You will die if it hits you and you spend that much stamina. Well... I'm only going to get one blue die plus one for one stamina. I... Yeah, I'd probably still try it though, because at least you'll survive. Oh, okay. No matter what. One blue die plus one. Two, three. So that's one damage. Puts it to 18. Okay, and now we turn over. Right, so it attacks, hitting only you. So I'm safe because I'm behind it for five damage. Uh, what sort of damage is it? It's physical damage. So four, so you take one damage. Yep. It then moves one towards you. God damn it. So it and you are now sharing the same. So now this is where we know it starts to repeat its activity. So we can start... Um, so it's kind of like predicting it, it in the game. Is that what happens? Are they? Yeah, you can start in the game. You can predict behavior. That's kind of half the point of Dark Souls. Against some of the particularly the more difficult bosses, is learning its behavior, learning what it's going to do based on how it looks and so on. Right. Okay. Cool. So I am going to turn over. Oh no! So it's my t actual turn. I am miles away. I get two stamina back. Um. I am going to move one. I actually can't get to attack it. So I'm going to do nothing. I can't do anything. So that's that turn. Now we get to see the same behavior again. So it moves two towards me, actually. So that's one, two. And pushes me back. If I don't dodge, um, I will spend the stamina to dodge, and I dodge, so I don't get pushed back. 
Um, it now does four magical damage against me. I am going to dodge. One, two, three. And I fail. I take four damage and I'm dead. No! Is that both of us gone then? That's both of us gone. Right, so, yeah. Game over. We, we've died again. We have <laughs> so, died again. Does that mean, does it recuperate all of its health? Yes. Uh, no, really? Yep, it recuperates all of its health for that. So, um, oh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to bring this back the general the general thing so all in all it's a very hard game yes um i think the, again, the you you know you are dead thing that you get at the front of the box is is very true i think it's literally a case of you have to grind to the very nth you know the very sort of top level yeah it it, it is unfortunately i'd say there's definitely a lot of grinding that's expected from this. Um, it's. I think that it's the. I think they've maybe taken the whole "you've died" difficulty thing a little far. Yeah. yeah in yeah. my opinion, um, and. I mean that was quite a fun little run through. Um, I think, it would work, far, better if the enemies didn't go every time the players went but then it kind of becomes it trivializes it the more players you get so i don't know how they'd address that but i i can't i get on this uh, maybe if you've got more players yeah they go every time but they're only going to really be focusing on one or two players i'm saying that if one dies then all you've got yeah exactly right 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 Okay, well, I think it, 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 I think it's just a game that you've got to get your head around and be a bit more methodical. And it literally isn't like your other games where you've got it, you run and gun. But that's just that's just the game itself. You've yeah. literally got to put a more thought I, into it. I, I think there's definitely that element to it. I also, yeah, I think I think it is going to take us a little while to get it right. To actually, is in terms of actually play it and win. Um, yeah, very, very tough, I would say. Very, very tough game. Right, okay, cool. All right, then. Um, we're going <coughs> to... Um, going to call that a day? Yeah, we're going to call that then, after all that death. Um, so, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure. Sorry you just watched us die, but there you go. That is Dark Souls. The board game. The board game. Um, a great miniatures great wee game just extremely hard yes very 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 difficult very difficult very difficult so um yeah by all means please hit the subscribe button um give us a give us a like a thumbs up uh, a follow check us out on facebook and twitter we will have a lot more streams uh for different tabletop games normal games and podcasts as well so uh keep an eye out and um Thanks a lot for watching. Yep, we died. We did die. <laughs>